Hi, uh, my name is Jack Richter Powell, and today I'm going to be presenting our work on input convex gradient networks. Uh, so this is work done by me, along with Jonathan Lorraine and Brandon Amos. Um, so the motivation for this work basically comes from Brenier's theorem, which tells us that for two suitable measures on the Euclidean space, uh, the solution to the optimal transport problem is not only realized as a map, but that map takes the form of the gradient of a convex uh, potential phi. Um, and so this result is kind of a cornerstone of the optimal transportation theory, but more recently it's seen applications in machine learning because this gives us a tractable form with which to model uh, these optimal transport maps. So it's been used for that purpose, as well as for uh, problems such as Wasserstein gradient flows, uh, things like density estimation and generative modeling. Um, so the gist is we want a way of modeling these gradients of convex functions, right, as a class of maps. Uh, so the popular existing approach is to work with uh, an input convex neural network and model a potential, fun potential function, let's say phi, and then we use automatic differentiation to compute the gradient map of that potential, right? This is uh, kind of the, um, the popular approach. Um, but what you might uh, think about is that, uh, you know, if what we're really interested in is the gradient of the function itself and maybe not the actual values of the function, uh, it seems like it would almost make more sense to model it as a vector field. So to model it directly using a neural network and parameterize the vector field itself. Um, the issue with that approach is that, of course, in general, an arbitrary vector field is not a potential field. Um, so you can't just drop in an arbitrary neural network and have all the math go through. Um, but we wanted some way of doing this on the level of the gradient. So what we came up with is uh, a theorem which basically characterizes when a vector field is actually the gradient of a convex potential. So we call it a theorem, but really it's just a simple consequence of uh, combining two results. Uh, the first of which is that if you have a vector field with a symmetric Jacobian, then that is a conservative vector field, um, which really just follows from the definition. And second, if you have the Jacobian of a vector field being positive semi-definite, then in the case where it's a conservative vector field, that Jacobian of the gradient is actually the Hessian matrix of the potential. So having that be positive semi-definite is equivalent to the potential itself being a convex function. Um, so this condition, basically gives us a way of checking if our vector field is uh, a gradient of convex function, right? But it, the, it operates on the level of the Jacobian, right? So what our approach with this model was is that we work with the Jacobian itself, which would be the Hessian of the potential, right? And then we're gonna integrate. So what does that look like? It looks like uh, starting with uh, M theta, which is this uh, explicit network, this hidden network basically, uh, we compute this, this line integral of its symmetrized Jacobian. So uh, this we're going to call an input convex network so that, that uh, the network itself, the output values are uh, actually given by numerically computing this line integral uh, of this matrix. And the key point about this matrix is that because we've constructed it in a special way, we've constructed it as this grand product, it's symmetric PSD by construction. So for suitable M theta, the hidden network, the, the uh, Jacobian of the output of the input convex network is actually given by that matrix itself. So by our theorem, this means that we're actually parameterizing the gradient of a convex function in this way. Um, a few quick notes on this is that we can actually use automatic differentiation to compute the values in the integrand efficiently. So we don't need to construct the whole matrix. Uh, we can use uh, AD to compute these vector products in linear time. And we're also not really tied to any quadrature method, specifically when we go to compute the values of this integral. Um, so one current limitation I feel like I should make clear is that right now we can only work with single layer networks, um, but we think this is somewhat of a superficial limitation and uh, we're hoping to definitely go beyond that in the future with this uh, construction. So to wrap up, here's kind of the high level picture overview and the way I like to think of this is that the uh, existing approach basically works by modeling this uh, potential function. So we model a surface here and then taking a, a spatial gradient to compute the gradient vector field. Uh, but by contrast to that, our work with the input convex gradient networks works by modeling the Hessian and then integrating that Hessian in order to compute a vector field. 
Um, so yeah, here are some references, uh, a few things I mentioned. Uh, and thanks so much to the uh, organizers for a fantastic workshop. <laughs>